Okay, so let's get into this game tonight. It's looking mm-hmm. like a fun one. Uh, a couple interesting storylines. The Philly secondary is beat up. You have the whole primetime Kirk Cousins thing. So your view on the game as a whole, and if you could only make one bet for the game, what are you betting on? Yeah, a lot of uh, of what Josh just mentioned, I'm with the secondary. And the fact that, you know, you're moving. So Joby, Bradbury goes out, and this is all going to, this is all going to go to Minnesota Viking receivers overs. I like I like a couple of them. I like I do like Addison. I do like Hawkinson. And let me tell you the reasons why. Uh, they're bumping down. Obviously, Bradbury is out. Joby comes in for Bradbury now. PFF had Joby at a. I watched every snap that he was in the game last week when jo, Joby I'm talking about when he came in. I watched every snap, and they had him at a 51 grade, which which I, I, I that's I would take that with a grain of salt. And it was looking at that. He was he was pretty solid to be honest. I, don't, I think that grade was, was I'm not sure where they're getting that from. He was pretty solid, but blanket ship in the middle, the missing one of their safeties. That that's going to open up. Hawkinson is going to get they're going to double team him, or he's going to get open. He's going to work the middle of the field. And to your point, if their O line is not great right now, they have you know their center is out, their right guard is weak, and one of the guards is weak. Um, I expect the ball out quick, and that's that's Hawkinson on choice routes. He's just working the middle. So I like Hawkinson. I like Hawkinson over, and I also like Addison over. So with this being a short week, it's early in the season, do you think a short week is less of a big deal because it is only week two of the season? Yeah, recovery-wise, yeah. I mean, and also, I think the advantage, Joe, in, in, in a short week will be for units that have been together longer because you have the ability to adjust to – uh, schematically and to add wrinkles in, in, into your defense or offense that you may, may need to after seeing what happened in week one. Units that have been together longer uh, can do that quicker and adjust. Teams that are – or units that are kind of new together, new coordinators, I think they'll have a tougher time doing that for a short week. So, yeah. Okay, so before we get into uh, your favorite look for Sunday, I want to ask you back, back week one uh, – we had some real surprising results. The Steelers and the Giants got it absolutely handed to them on their home fields. You know, we saw surprise wins by the Rams and the Bucks, a complete no-show by the Bengals. So out of the surprising results we saw in week one, which one do you think better should underreact to the most? Oh, gosh. That's, that's, that's difficult. I mean, I want to say, say Pittsburgh because I, I, I believe, you know, I really thought highly of them. I, I like what I like what Kenny uh, Pickett does. I mean, I think that I think Kenny Pickett does. I think he's a young quarterback. He sees things. He's I, I like. I just like him. I think he's instinctual, which is the you know confidence and instinct are the best things in a quarterback. Everyone, the rest of the stuff they all have, but that confidence and instinct. Anyway, bottom line is uh, there's stuff I didn't like from him, but I want I want to believe that's just a one off. So I'll be real interested to see what happens this week. Um, and then the bill stuff is interesting, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming out. If you heard yesterday, like forget about the other night, but just even yesterday coming out of Buffalo, you know, about Josh's work habits and, and, you know, how he prepares and maybe he's not the one and all that. So let's, I'm interested to see how, how Josh, how do you think Josh bounces back here? What's, what's your take on, on Josh right now and what you saw? Well, he seems to be regressing, you know, the first two years of his career. Those were the issues, turnovers, uh, you know, a a lot of ugly throws. And he's a volatile wild card. He's going to win a lot of games for them, and they're going to lose a lot of games because of Josh Allen. That's exactly what happened on Monday night against the Jets. They had that game handed to them on a silver platter, especially when Aaron Rodgers went down. And they should have won that game easily. And that's, I think that's going to come back to bite them in a very tight AFC. That's I the think key. The, the, the Jets are probably out of the picture now, to be honest, but there's a lot of competition in the AFC North. The Chargers are probably going to get back in the mix. Miami looks like they're going to be really good. There's always going to be a surprise team or two. So I think yeah. that might come back to bite them quite badly. That's the most shocking thing is Josh understands how tight the AFC East is and the AFC to not, to not grab the one when they needed it. It surprises me. All right, my man. Let's look ahead to Sunday here. What's your favorite bet for the weekend? Yeah, I like I like your Miami Dolphins. Yes, uh, sir. And look, I think Miami Dolphins. If you're playing, you're playing the Patriots. You know Belichick. I think they played more man than anybody else in Week One. They, they play. That's that's you know that's that's Bill. They're gonna they're gonna play some man snaps. The Dolphins caught 
the Chargers, I'll say caught because the Chargers don't want to play man uh, against the Dolphins. They caught him in man, I believe, five five times in the game. And twice, big chunk explosive plays from Tyreek. And a third one, he was open, but two got pressured and flushed out and couldn't get out on time. So that's that's three potentially, two big plays, explosives versus man. I mean, if you're getting versus man, if you're getting over 50% of, your, 50% of the plays, big down the field chunks, that's not that's not good. Um, it should be more of like three or four percent. But uh, yeah, so I, I think if you look at the Patriots and they want to play man, they just can't play man. And even even with an injured, um, if he, Waddle is banged up, which I've heard, uh, he might be he might be out with the hip flex or whatever it is. Um, they're still deep there. I mean, I was down there for a few days. Uh, I got sent down for camp and watched watched a few days down there. Braxton Berrios is is a menace in the slot. Like him and Tua were, if I didn't know any better and know the numbers in the jerseys, I would have thought he was their number one, maybe. Like he was, and we know that's not reality, but he was going off and, and is was doing work between the numbers. So uh, he will take uh, more of the load. And I think, I think they smacked the Patriots pretty good. Yeah, a little nugget on that game as well. So you're probably going to hear people talking about this one. And, hey, they might be on the Patriots. And you'll probably hear someone say, I love Belichick getting points at home in a divisional game. The Patriots are 0-5 against the spread in their last five games as a home underdog. So don't listen to that. I don't really think that – let me ask you this. Do you think that the reputation of Bill Belichick should still be brought into people's handicaps? I don't think it should be anymore. What do you think of that? It's a, that's a good question. I, I think I think it's I'm with you. I think it, it it's over. I think it's over played into it. Especially, let's say it this way, it should be put into it when Bill has the pieces, the chess pieces, to be able to do what he wants to do. Because he's he's a smart guy. He's he's great at adapting. He's great at taking you know what is it putting your your dominant arm behind your back is what they say. But when you don't have the pieces and the talent to do it, then then I think we over. We overvalue what he can do when he doesn't have, you know, good talent. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing is you look at this roster, I'm with you. Like the Bill Belichick thing and this, I've heard that a lot already. Oh, they have Belichick. We're going to see what they can do in Tua, what Tua can do against Belichick. Well, different story when he doesn't have, you know, the pieces uh, to move around back there on defense. So uh, I'm with you. I think it's overhyped. Okay, so before we let you go, and we so got to talk. Uh, Asante Samuel Sr. think Bill's overhyped too, if you haven't read his stuff on Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I caught that. Uh, let me ask you about the Jets here, though. This is probably, I've been watching football for a long time, even watching for a little bit longer. Uh, th- that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. We had six months of buildup. That was the number one story. Aaron Rodgers in New York. It was the number one story on the cover of magazines. So much content. Focused on that, it was going to be, you know, probably the funnest thing to uh, to track throughout the course of the season. Everyone knows I was down on the Jets, but still, I didn't want to see Aaron Rodgers get injured. I want to see how this was going to play out because that's right. part of the fun of watching this stuff. But uh, their defense looked pretty damn good. I know uh, Josh Allen kind of made it easy for them in a couple spots, but do you think there's a chance that you know we're in mid December and the Jets are still in the mix potentially? I mean, does it does Philip Rivers pop up? Does, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, so I know it's it's funny because I just the best options are, are guys who are recently retired. I, I really, I mean, are you going to win with Zach Wilson? I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. But I mean, he does. He was the number two overall pick, and obviously, a lot of evaluators watched him, and he's talented. He, he wouldn't get selected that high and given a contract unless he had some tools. So. Maybe he's learned some stuff. I don't know, but but yeah, I mean, I look at the talent they have, and I'm with you. It's it's uh, they're loaded in most places, um, except for the offensive line, which is part of the reason why Aaron's not here. But um, uh, they, they could find a way. I don't know who or what it is. There's no one. There's no one to trade for. So it's either get somebody who's recently retired and still wants to play, or hope that hope that Zach can uh, you know can figure it out. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope they are in play because just just to watch football and, and that be a story is, is great. I more care about um, winning and, and, and cracking the books every week than I do about storylines, to be totally honest with you, although my, my jobs kind of conflict each other, but um, they, they, they know that anyway. That's my passion. 
Um, but I didn't want I didn't want to follow this storyline because it is it's must see TV and it's it sucks kind of that it's that story's not going to be there whether it was good good or bad. Yeah, it, one of the more shocking things I've ever seen in my entire life of watching sports. Now it would be interesting from a I love when other teams have drama, right? And do I think Zach Wilson's going to develop into a good good quarterback? No, I don't. <laughs> but stranger things have happened. It would be very interesting if he, you know, gets better as the season goes along. Right. Maybe the Jets finish the season nine and eight, and people kind of change their tune on him where, hey, this guy might be the quarterback of the future. Then all of a sudden, you have Aaron Rodgers wanting to come back. And it's like, well, what do we do here? I mean, they probably would go to Rodgers, but I think that'd be a funny predicament for the Jets to be in. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Zach's going to be that that good. I think uh, enough to where they want to move on from Rodgers, but uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, no, why'd you laugh at my Philip Rivers? No, no chance. Well, I mean, he he was rumored to come what to San Francisco last, last year. Yeah, yeah, and he could come in a veteran guy. You know, he probably he won't make as many mistakes as Zach Wilson, right. and you know they can control the clock and play to try to play the whole time management game. But yeah. I mean, who? The, he's not my first. Card. He's not my first choice. But I'm saying, if there's there's just nobody out there, who else is out there? Yeah, you're gonna do someone the... say Colin Kaepernick yesterday, and and I tweeted back to them if, if if Cap comes back, then I'm coming back. Damn it. Yeah, listen, Kaepernick hasn't played in 70 years. You might as well give Tim Tebow a shot if you're gonna give uh, Kaepernick a shot, right? And you know, Carson Wentz. I know the guy's a bit of a punching bag. No chance there. He's failed for three teams. So yeah. It might be Philip Rivers. I would love to see it. Maybe uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, too. I don't know what kind yeah. of shape he's in. But uh, it would be interesting to see. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, the jokes were made with Tom Brady. But, yeah, I think the Jets are going to be stuck with uh, Zach Wilson. Did you give now. me a lock yet for tonight? Did you give me one? I like over 48 and a half for Did this one. I think, the, I think they're going to be zipping up and down the field. I like the Eagles first quarter uh, minus a point and a half hey, as I'm well. putting that I'm putting that over 40 and a half in right now you know what I call that Joe I call What's that a that? support bet because you got to support your team so I'm gonna yes, a support bet I'm throwing it in and if we hit that I'm just gonna keep on riding with you that's what we do 